Welcome to the Stealth Channel. In today's video we will examine the Sukhoi T-4MS, a stealth bomber the Soviet Union almost built in the 1970s. Before we get to today's video, if you enjoy the content on this channel, please like, subscribe, share and leave a comment to help this channel grow. Feel free to leave a comment below to suggest stealth platforms you would like to see this channel cover in the future. I hope you will enjoy my content and continue to come back for more. Now on to today's video. The Sikhoi T-4MS was the result of a design competition to create a new swept-wing strategic bomber and missile carrier for the Soviet Union in response to the American Advanced Manned Strategic Aircraft Program, which eventually led to the Rockwell B-1B Lancer. The Sikhoi, Tupolev and Myashishev design bureaus were pitted against each other for the design competition in 1969. The Tupolev Design Bureau proposed their Project 160, which was based on the Tupolev Tu-144 supersonic passenger aircraft. The Myashishev Design Bureau proposed their M-18 design. The Sikhoi Design Bureau proposed a modified version of their T-4M design. During the period of development, Sikhoi's engineers tried several aerodynamic variants of the fuselage. At first, it was planned to create an aircraft by completely redesigning the T-4M. This attempt failed because of dramatic changes in dimensions and weight which could not ensure needed payload and strategic capabilities. Engineers were forced to look for newer ways and technologies that could fully satisfy the following main demands, getting maximum volume of containers along with reaching minimal air resistance, the capability of carrying the needed number of missiles and bombs, reaching maximum hardness of the wing and fuselage in order to fly near the ground at an extreme speed, the possibility of the installation of newer and more advanced power plants if invented, and future technology upgrades. This includes such things as developing and including stealth technologies in the construction of the T-4MS. Working on the final integral modifications of the T-4M, engineers of the Sukhoi Design Bureau concluded that the variant that will most satisfy these demands would be the flying wing. The T-4MS design was initiated in 1970, and it was designed to fly at speeds of up to Mach 3. In the autumn of 1972, the Ministry of Science and Ministry of Technology reviewed the competing projects. The Tupolev Project 160 was rejected due to significant differences between governmental requirements and its actual capabilities. General of the USSR Air Force said of it at the time, you are practically offering to us a passenger airplane. It was also discovered that the aerodynamic qualities of the Project 160 were falsified and didn't satisfy governmental demands. The Myashishev M18 was very attractive as well but still denied, because the newly formed Myashishev Design Bureau didn't have enough industrial and technological power and had a lack of engineers for meeting governmental deadlines. The Sikhoi T-4MS attracted the Air Force experts the most. This aircraft could hardly be stopped even with the most sophisticated systems of the 1990s. In the end, the Sikhoi T-4MS project was admitted to be the best choice for the Soviet Air Force. But to build the T-4MS, Sikhoi would have to use the Kazan Aviation Plant. It was hardly acceptable because this could cancel the development of the T-10, which became the Su-27 Flanker, and the modernization of the Su-17M Fitter C and the Su-24 Fencer which were already underway at Kazan. Producing the T-4MS could cause the cancellation of all of these programs, and there was no way the USSR could go for it. After deeply reviewing all the projects, Chief Commander of the USSR Air Force, Pavel S. Kitikov said, you know, let's make our decision. Yes, the T-4MS project is the best, and I admit that, but the Sikhoi OKB is already involved in the development of the Su-27 which is very, very important to us. So let's give the glory of victory to OKB Sikhoi, but transfer all the materials and information to the Tupolev OKB, so that it could run all the works. Tupolev OKB rejected all of the documentation about the T-4MS and continued its work on their brand new aluminum bomber with swept wings, which eventually led to the Tu-160 Blackjack. With a similar payload and range at speeds below supersonic, the Tu-160 was 35% heavier than the T-4MS and had two to three times less range at supersonic speeds. Work on the Sukhoi T-4MS project was stopped, but the ideas and technologies taken from this aircraft were productively used in other aircraft such as the Su-27 Flanker, the MiG-29 Fulcrum, the Tu-160 Blackjack and other aircraft of the 21st century. 
After learning about the Sequoia T4MS, you might be saying to yourself, hey, that design looks familiar, and you would be right. Apparently, Tupolev went back and revisited Sequoia's design when they were developing the Pack da bomber in the 2010s as an early design configuration of the bomber released in 2014 bears a striking resemblance to the T4MS. The Sikhoi T4MS was ahead of its time, and if it had been produced and put into active service, it could have posed a real threat to American forces during the height of the Cold War. I will endeavor to upload a new video each week so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have uploaded a new video. I hope you will enjoy this content and continue to come back for more.